we all understand the, the the name of second chance company, but it's really not even a second chance if they ain't doing nothing but putting you in a position to fail, as most people said when they came on the show. Warren in the building. So, man, you 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 had so much to to say in the background when we was testing back and forth. So much stuff that's going on for that one week period that you was there. Somebody tried to run up on the company. You had your stuff stolen. They gave you, I guess they gave you a truck that wasn't up to par, man. And all of this within a span of, of one week, man, like. Come on, bro. I'm already I'm already getting my back chewed out because I'm letting drivers with not that much experience, not that much time. But you guys want to come on and, and really tell your story. So are you just doing this just to get on the F Super Eagle bandwagon or what? What's what's going on, man? Talk to me. Nah, man, I could care less about that, but it's more for just for the sake of the drivers, man. I mean, you know, we all understand the the, the name of second chance company, but it's really not even a second chance if they ain't doing nothing but putting you in a position to fail, as most people said when they came on the show. But, uh, yeah, man, the experience over there was horrible, man. Like, I, I procrastinated for six months, but, you know, when you're in a situation where it's like, you know, you're steady getting to know or how long has it been since the South this, since the South that, you know, it's just like you gamble with what you can get and you want to see how it is for yourself when you get over there. But then when you get over there, the first thing it is is instant red flags. And it's just like, you know, I should have just with what I was seeing instead of trying to get them the benefit of the doubt. So, so many red flags out there, bro. I, and, hey, listen. For anybody that's still over there drinking the Kool-Aid, by all means, drink drink the Kool-Aid. Hey. Huh? Oh, hey. You're the Kool-Aid guy. Yeah. What are you doing? Just waiting. For what? I'm just waiting, dude. Relax. That's about it. There, There's a whole host of other videos, other groups, other reviews out there about controversial company Super Eagle. My channel just happened to be the, the, the most popular channel that everybody gravitates to when it comes to Super Eagle content because not only did I talk to the drivers, but I also talked to some of the recruiters over there by the Make the Call series. And I talked to a few drivers that, that did make it over there. One of which I don't believe is driving anymore. I think he actually worked inside the company. But, hey, he's, I, I guess he's still making it over there. I have uh, I have my guy, Anonymous. He's a, he's a regular to the show. Well, he don't drive for them, but he's an owner-operator. And he, and he pulls, pulls their freight whenever he needs some extra money or whatever. But still, though, I'm not for or against the company. If people is interested in going over there, giving them the benefit of the doubt, by all means, go ahead. It's not for me. I I did my research. I I I watched the videos. I read the reviews, and I already put it in my head, regardless of the fact that if I was an owner operator or not, because I have talked to owner operators that try to pull for controversial company Super Eagle as well. So it's I, I know it's just not for me, but it's just unfortunate for a lot of you guys out there that has unfortunate situations that's that's laid upon y'all being in the SAP program or or your background is to the point that nobody don't want to touch you. Super ego is your only way out. If you can, if you can make it through, bro, for your situation, you, you got there and things wasn't going to, wasn't going to go your way, even to the point of you saying somebody stole your, your gear. Like, how did that happen? Like what, what happened? It was, it was even actually before, I mean, even before I got there if, at the airport, it was signs like, you know, there was like spiritual signs, like signs from God saying not even go. But instead, it's like, you know, I give them a second chance. Once again, you know, we had flight issues. So, you know, the pilot come on, he say what he say. So my flight gets delayed for an hour and a half, two hours because of something wrong with the plane. But on top of that, I got stopped by a police officer in the, in the uh, airport. He told me what he told me. 
and he basically told me, hey, God, God got something good for you. You know, you're the light of God. I believe he's coming back, et cetera, et cetera. But after that, I had plane malfunctions, and the man just disappeared. But two two hours later, get on the flight. I get there. They tell me where to check in at. So I check in. Boom. The lady, she breaks my driver's license. You know how you hand somebody a card or something, and they bend it? It instantly. I'm like, damn, you broke my... Uh, like you broke my license. She literally just sat my license down, got up, walked off, and told the other lady to like basically assist me or whatever. So I'm like, okay. So I just started laughing. Like the building is just like a, a empty office with somebody in it, and you go in. It's not like no, like they say, it's not no happy greetings, et cetera, et cetera. It's just you get in there, you the person you are when they get there. So they tell you to put your things inside of a. A orientation locker room or storage room, whatever it is. It's surrounded by cameras. But, you know, long story short, everybody put all their items inside of the locker room. And I guess just before the day was over with, in the middle of orientation, I go back to get something out of my luggage and everything gone. And I'm like, you know, I instant spaz out. I'm like, you know, they got a security guard, quote unquote, on site, but he obviously was nowhere to be around, you know, when when things are going on. So, you know, I spaz out, make them call people and stuff like that. And they instantly, same day, got the footage and, you know, they found out who it was, et cetera. But quote unquote, supposed to have been a guy who quit or got fired three months ago, who just now coming back to like retrieve his items and stuff like that. But on the way out, he's stealing everybody's stuff. At first, I thought it was my stuff, but he's stealing everybody's stuff. Like he had the time, he had at least 35, 40 minutes in the, in the, uh, storage room to gather whatever he needed yes wow so this particular gentleman was just coming back getting this stuff like like they they just let him in there without no no assistance no no escort or nothing like that he's a former driver like but even even former drivers at at other companies get get eyeballed like what you doing here you know what i'm saying like and then just let them go up into in into the i guess locker room did to, to retrieve his stuff why not just have somebody like security to go in there and to go with him so he can retrieve his stuff so he he just came in there and just took his stuff your stuff and everybody else stuff as well yeah, because a lot of people didn't know that their stuff was gone. But me being me, you know, I spaz, and now it's raising red flags to everybody. They, oh, let me go get my stuff. Oh, people are leaving stuff in the locker rooms to go stay at the hotel rooms, thinking they're coming right back. They taking everything. Like, everybody just instantly started going to get their stuff. But thing is, it's automatic open door. You get there, the door is wide open. Then the door to the storage room wide open but you know like i say after that you know they tried to get me to run around and say oh we don't know who it was but the same day i get a knock on the door at the truck they saying like oh yeah dude quit three months ago he just been coming back you know feeling woo, woo, woo. but then when i talked to cooking with hammer or whoever whatever y'all want to call him by he says that nah man that guy ain't been up here no three months now all of a sudden you go from oh we're gonna go back a week to we're gonna go back three four months to see who the guy is so that automatically let me know one y'all automatically know who it is two you know like i know that this guy been gone at least three months or he just quit and he just coming back up here quote unquote next day you won't even believe what happened next day all right so 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 my guy man so this this is all all per your account though right uh, you're not just you you're not just coming on just just to sell wolf tickets just to get another story out there per your account this actually happened this is my things, my items, my experience. This is not nothing that I gathered from nobody. I literally took the time I went to Super Ego. I could tell you who my uh, recruiter was. I could tell you my dispatcher. I could tell you my yard manager. I could tell you my fleet manager. And people that went to Super Ego, they'll know exactly who I'm talking about. But you, 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 you sent the text to him explaining that your things was missing and i'm not sure who who you was talking to in the text somebody responded to you saying that they want you to make sure to talk to your yard manager they'll talk to him too i noted them for the truck issues that you was having as far as the stolen things they said i they said i don't think we know who did it but you said you they found out who did it the next the next day they found they knew exactly who did it within uh what 
15, 30 minutes after they watched the camera and got the footage back, they bright face, bright as day. He literally looked into the camera and they instantly knew who it was. But you have one particular person who did some investigation overnight, et cetera, text people, went through old applications trying to figure out who it was, but they already know exactly who it was. But the next day, that's when I get a talk to from the security guard. He was like, hey, we found out who did it, but we don't know if we can retrieve your items. So at that point, it was just like, it was out the door. But like I say, he came again. Well, you asked for reimbursement, and they came They came back and said, they said they're not sure about that. So have, have, they, have they gotten back to you since they found out who did it? Have they gotten back with you to say, hey, here's, here's a D-check or... Or whatever the case to cover for the items that was missing. What 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 are the items missing as 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 you say there's missing? All right, we basically speaking like four weeks of clothes, tent set, like all my personal items. I'm oh. really thinking some of my business documents and stuff was in there because you know they're gonna have you on 1099. You gotta have your uh, you know, basically all your LLC stuff like that. But it was mainly majority of everything that I flew in with. The only thing he left me with was a blanket, my blanket that I brought with me. That was the only thing I was left with. So he took your your briefcase or he took your suitcase? Yo, yo. Yeah, my suitcase that I flew in with, yeah. Wow. Is is clothes is replaceable? What about the paperwork? Are you able are you able to get replace the paperwork that you need? Or do you have to go? Yeah, you you know, you know, all your business documents is always on the uh, the state that you're in website. So all I did was just went back and retrieved some of the things. And I got to just figure out if there's a possible way to change, like, EIN numbers and stuff like that, if he choose to do anything with it. But other than that, like, I really just can't say, like, if it was just certain things in that bag. I know I just packed four weeks of everything and, and like, important documents because they're going to tell you. You're going to be out two, three weeks, and you're going to go two, three weeks without a check. It says it on their paperwork. You're going to receive a check in the next two to three weeks. So it's like no going no going home no time soon. So, you know. <laughs> No going home and try to try to try to outfit the truck right off the right off the rip that you ain't getting no money for the next couple of weeks. And then you got to think about it. They had me start at the end of the week. So it's like you, your, your payments and everything don't start until your first load get dispatched. So now it's like you got people freaking out because they like, man, it's the end of the week. We got a truck note coming up. So it was just a whole runaround up there, man. And it's exactly what it is. But for you, it only lasts a week. Like you got there, let's just say you got there Sunday, you left Saturday. Like you you experienced maybe about a two, three months of issues in one week. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and then it's just a simple fact of you coming in as a driver thinking, okay, you already know what to expect from the business, but you you giving them the benefit of the doubt. But man, it's people you can I can call now and I see myself. There's so many drivers come up there a day. Man, y'all been leading this company. Don't get in that truck. I'm telling you not. Get in that truck. Go home. Like, they actually saying all this in front of them, and it's like they don't care. They just like, all right, I'll go another guy finna quit. Like, literally, people dropping off trucks, people quitting, people coming in. And then, like I told you, with the man who came back up there trying to, you know, do whatever he was going to do. It's like, once you see all that going on in one week, not even three days, it's just like, you know, you, your antennas get to going up. And it's like, well, why did I even come for real? Like, you know, let me go ahead and get out of here before they get in my pockets. But let me ask you this. Why did you come for real? I know you explained that when we started talking, but with all the stuff that's out there, man, that is that is laid out for you. I again for for me, I I seen it. I read it. I I saw it. I already made it a in in tune decision not to mess with controversial company Super Eagle. But then again, like I said before, some of you guys are in the, are in situations that Super Eagle would probably be your only salvation, I guess. Uh my full ultimate like story on that is I actually was just trying to finish my last five steps of the step and get out, really. But it was more for us like I just like driving trucks. But it's like, you know, once you see in videos, you see more bad than you see good, but then you try to alternate or balance the good and bad and be like, Oh, maybe, you know, most of the videos are years old. But then again, is when you go in there and you find out, you know, some videos are two, three months. It's like the more and more close I was getting to go, I was seeing I 
it's a girl, Tucker girl, nice. She was there a month before I went, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, the signs are getting closer and closer. Like, what else, you know, what else I'm supposed to do, you know? So I was just like, you know, and then you know they got the new violate the new rule coming out as of September. If your violations and stuff open, they taking your CDL. So it's like, you know, I just was trying to get in, boom, get my stuff back green, and you know, basically keep my CDLs at that point. Well, th- again, like I said, there are a few Kool Aid drinkers. Oh yeah. that still rock out with super eagle more power to them my my thing is this i see a lot of these guys that that's that's in defense of controversial company super eagle and that's in defense of other companies as well they they want to come out they want to hurry up and run to the forefront and say oh this company is this this company is that this company does this for me and that this that and the third but you got to understand that's your experience that's your that's for you what's going on for you is for you if it's working for you then that's you 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 can't just come and say what's working for you would probably work for everybody else because it don't it don't and for you to run to the defense of of a of a corporation that's quiet as it kept really don't care about you like they wouldn't care if you come out there and say oh well this this is a great company and and this company does this that and the third they'll they'll probably say thank you they'll probably throw a couple of dollars your way but who's to say something happened who's to say you you took one too many days off who's to say that you 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 just get tired of all of the politics and when that happens when 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 the yes man becomes no man that company ain't got no love for you no more they the only reason why they got love for you is because you yes man Yes, I'll do this. They want you to do. Yeah, yes, I'll do this. Yes, I'll run that. Yes, I'll run my clock out. Yes, I'll do this. Yes, I'll I'll drink the Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. Then pass it on to other people. Yes. But when you start saying no, no, nah, I'm I'm a little bit tired today. Oh, well, we really need to get that low there today. Yeah, but I've been driving and I'm almost out of hours and I, I really need to get my rest in, man. And and besides, the load ain't due there until tomorrow morning. So, no, no, no. We really need you to get there today so that you could be set up for tomorrow to get ready to run as soon as you get up out the bed. What, I can't go in there and get, get nothing to eat? I can't go in there and wash my ass and get fresh? No, no, no. We want you out of the bed and in the seat driving. Well, no, I can't do that. Oh, no? No? When when did you start becoming no man? I thought you was the yes man. Like, I started becoming a no man when when I start seeing things ain't working. Well, you getting good money, ain't you? Well, sometimes the money ain't all that. Yeah, 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 that, that part, that part, that part. But they'll always throw that up there in front of you be like, well, all you have to do is keep that left door shut and just keep running and you'll make the money. Like bro, okay, so I can't I I I I can't eat. I, I, I can't eat, I can't shit, I can't piss. Well, I, I could probably piss while I'm driving, but I'm just saying, bro, I I can't pull over and, and get a stretch in. No. But they oh. wouldn't have liked me anyway, because I'm doing that regardless. <laughs> he come in there talking about like, hey, you capable of running forty eight, maybe five thousand miles a week. Hey man. Look, I already know what y'all trying to do. And then the, another thing, the reason why, I went, it's because, like, I tried to balance it out saying, like, okay, most people don't understand when you get there. Some stuff may be wrong with the truck. You got to pay to get it fixed. True. That's in defense because it's like if you go to a car lot, like, something wrong with that car, or you leaving something wrong with that car, you got to get it fixed. So I was trying to, like, overlook some of the stuff that I thought it to, but it's like when you get over there, none of that really even matter because they're going to tell you, oh, man, recap tires, best recap, recap tires we have right now. No, nah, it's like a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't leave until I got new tires. All they do is go in there, shine that tire down, put some of that new ceiling on there, and they're going to come out making it look like a, my tire My tire broke seal within one day if when it was supposed, it was supposed to be a, a new recap tire. I knew I knew what was going on. So I just sat there. I said, you know what? I'm going to let them unlock this car. I'm going to fill up, and I'm going to just take it to the house. And that's what I did, load and everything. 
Bro, I'm going to ask you this, and don't take this the wrong way, but bro, why why you didn't come there? Why why you didn't come there with no money, man? You could have just got in and said hell with this, get my ass back on the plane, and 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 try to reset, man. Why y'all coming in with the with the feeling of of trying to make it, trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, trying to think that y'all gonna make some money, but why are y'all coming there with no money, bro? Like. It's, you you don't go on vacation without no money, right? You don't, but you got to put it in the fact of in situations you don't know people's situation. Even if I was the only person with no money, most people that was there, man, I've been here since Sunday, man, I ain't ate. So it's like, you know, a lot of people go there with no money. In my defense, I had the money, but it's like, let's see what the company going to do. I had the same thing on for four days. And anybody there that know or that can vouch for this situation, they'll tell you. I had the same thing on for four days. And when they saw me, I had the same thing on. And I kept asking, what we going to do about my stuff? What we going to do about my stuff? What we do about my stuff? Nobody had I told I told my dude, oh, we're going to see what they going to do. Like, we're going to do something. Because if not, one thing about it, I'm going to get the money back out of you because this truck going back 13, 1,400 miles away from here. And that's exactly what happened. Now that you're back home, and I guess the truck is at a truck stop. You you didn't do nothing to the truck, right? Because some people that I talked to, they sabotage the truck. Like they didn't they didn't give a f. Uh, nah, I I ain't gonna say I did nothing to the truck, but uh, you know the things that I got played in my head in defense. It's like okay, you know I'm gonna just sugarcoat it like this. I parked beside another truck of their company. It's been there five days. The trailer is gone. The load is gone. But the truck is still there. So I say give them two, three weeks. Come in two, three weeks. I'm I'm gonna assume and I'm and this and I'm just speculating here that the company already came and retrieved the trailer. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna speculate that they that they did that considering the fact that it was a load. And they they'll come down there. They'll probably send one of their recovery guys down there to get the load, and then they'll probably send somebody down there later on. Probably probably the girl that I talked to because she's a recovery driver. She might come down there and get the truck or whatever. But I'm just saying, at least at least you didn't at least you didn't sabotage the truck, man. No, because once I found out they don't actually put nothing on your DAC report, it ain't like you know what I'm saying. They literally tell you in orientation, you're going to get a bill of sale. You don't get a title to the truck once the truck is paid off. They literally tell you that, oh, once the truck paid off, you get a bill of sale. So, therefore, it ain't nothing they can do about it because it's a bill of sale. Anybody can write a bill of sale, get a stamp by the notary, and it's a wrap. Like, it's a bill of sale. How can you track back a bill of sale? Back to what you said earlier about recruiters, I, I came across a, a few of them, and I even got an email from one of my viewers stating another black ops company wanted to know if they can drive 900 miles a day, eight, 900, close to a thousand miles a day. And I'm like, what that means, right? In order to legally, legally, no shit. I, I stop when I, when I run out my clock, I, I'd say maybe about eight close to yeah, it. Yeah, I do about 750, 760. Yeah, and then I yeah, close, down. right, Man. right, close to it. You know what I'm saying? Depending on where I'm at, how hard I'm running, and if it's a dropping hook or whatever the case. But you're talking like, you, you're talking like 900, 1,000. I said eight, right? I said maybe about seven, my fault. Eight, eight is pushing it. But still, though, that that's what they asking. They, they asking you, Hey, what kind of driver you are? They 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 just get right to the nitty gritty. Like, what kind of driver you are? Well, I feel that I'm a conscious driver. I'm a safe driver. I I, I do everything legally. Is it possible that you can run about 900 miles a, a day? 900 legally? Well, majority of our they they not gonna come straight out and and say they're they're sugarcoated by saying well, majority of our 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 content. It's dropping. You go in, you drop the trailer, hook up to a trailer, and you just keep going. Oh, and that's how they get you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Then when you get on, then you, how you will actually be able to run. Right. You'll be able to run 
Because once you get in there, they're giving you a registration and insurance for the trailer that you technically rented or bought. So how is it dropping hooks? So you telling me I'm going to just leave my trailer that I'm putting money in and just leave it here for somebody else to pick it up? They had a situation like that before I left. Man invested $12,000 in this trailer. They gave it to a company driver, and the company driver then went elsewhere with the trailer. And the man hot because he like, how is my trailer getting put under another person if this is my trailer? They don't, they don't work like that. That's just like my truck. Oh, yeah, we don't have no KWs. All of a sudden, I go to lunch, come back, they got a KW. So all of a sudden, you just, you just popping out with stuff. Then I'm asleep. Get a guy come to the trailer. Hey, man, I'm supposed to get this trailer. No, you're not. No, you're not supposed to get this trailer. My, I'm showing him the documents. He's showing me the same documents. We both got the same trailer number, registration number, VIN number. Oh, no, you all going to have to figure it out. That's what they do. It's a cover-up. Then they don't tell you about all the multiple stops and multiple pickups and stuff like that. They just hit you with the, oh, yeah, drop a hook. All right, okay. I dropped it, hooked it right there in that, uh, that, that uh, truck stop miles down the road. Well, I appreciate you coming on and telling your story, man. Thank you very much. As always, everybody, if you guys are interested in coming on and talk to me and tell me a story of, of controversial company, Supi, or whether it's been a week, a month. And look. don't get tricked by they so-called Uber drivers that pull up because he's not an Uber driver. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm not pro or con for controversial company, Supi Ego. I'm, I'm just, people have stories and you can you can find all sorts of of testimonials stories all throughout the internet all throughout the groups all throughout the reports it's it's out there for you guys to read to listen to watch but it all boils down to you person if 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 you feel confident enough that you want to drink the controversial company super eagle kool-aid uh hey i'm i'm in the wrong springfield avoid it if you can because they make chicks look positive and they not you negative i'm telling you your first week you're gonna be in the hole second week you're gonna be in the hole your third week you possibly get a chick and i'm doing that just that's off the calculations of what i would have seen and they tell you because you at the end of the, at the beginning of the month you got the first you got the oh uh, weekly but the monthly expenses coming out on top of your weekly expenses so you, one of your weeks you're gonna spend double the money so yeah just be prepared and don't put no money down on no truck either so you say don't put no money down on the truck I could have sent you so many videos. People telling me, hey, man, I've been here. I ain't seen them for $400. You've been here three months, and all you seen them for $400. Oh, all right. I saw this other video. There are reasons why everybody is is giving controversial company Super Eagle a chance. And obviously, it must be good because they still they still around, regardless of this lawsuit that's going on with them, too. Hey. How much longer that's going to take to actually take into effect? And then you got, he, they try to break it down to you like, oh, you can run for 800 plus miles and make five, $6,000 after you take out all your gross. I mean, your expenses. But you can also run 5,600, 5,800 uh, miles and bring home 50. Make it make sense. How? If the same driver making the same amount, but a lot of people, it's the, it's the gas, man. Because I saw my fuel, I saw my uh, miles for gallon change every day and that's turning the truck off turning it back on kws they reset every time that's how they get you i'm getting eight eight point nine almost nine miles a gallon then when i get over here to chicago wisconsin i'm at five so now it's like okay well damn how did i just go from missing i'm on cruise control i 68 and all of a sudden i just drop you cut the truck off because you think you're trying to save some money and then you see on there it pop back up zero oh that's how they get you that they, i feel like they alter and mess with that stuff yeah, miles per gallon in your car not going to change once you turn your car off. If it stops at 21 miles per gallon, it's going to stay at 21 miles per gallon until you do whatever you need to do to make it drop. But if I hop back on the interstate and I'm doing the same thing, it's going to stay there. It's not going to jump back from 21 to zero. No. That's why they want you to keep running because that, that thousand miles is a full tank of gas. So by the time you get there, guess what you got to do? Fill up. Oh, we want you to run another thousand miles in a day. Fill up. That's why they're spending twenty seven hundred, almost three thousand dollars in gas. Well, that'll do it, man. That will do it. All right, bro. Well, hey, I appreciate again. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with with us, man. And more power to you in the future. What I'm saying, hopefully, you get that a sap situation taken care of and and get back on this road, man. Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely, man. I got five more, and I actually talked to my staff evaluator, and I can pay for it myself out of pocket every month. They're just going to call me every month, let me know when to come in and do a drug test, and I can do it myself. That's what a lot of people don't know. They feel like they got to go to a company. You can do it yourself. All you got to do is talk with your evaluator and let them know, like, hey, 
not trying to, you know, go work for a company right now. I want to do it myself. They're going to give you the same follow-up that they'll give a company. So, well, at least that's what mine did, but, you know. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Time. That's, that's some good information. That's some good information, driver. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.